welcome back to my channel. This is kind of an impromptu video because I saw Julie from Julie Crakey, I think the name is. I'll leave her link down below. But she's been joining in Chantal over from the Intentional Homeschool in this like, um, here's our homeschool prompt. And I really liked it and I was like, oh, I kind of want to make a video too um, for our favorite picture books. And I thought that would be so much fun. And then Chantal actually jumped in and did it as well. And so now I've got these two wonderful ladies that I love to watch sharing their favorite picture books. And I'm like, oh, I want to join in. That sounds like fun. So here I am joining in. But I want to give them credit because honestly, if they hadn't done this, I don't know at what point I would have jumped in. So you can go ahead and check their channels out. They will be linked down below. Highly recommend them. They have beautiful content. Julia is a mom of eight. And so she's just like to the point in how she makes it work under homeschooling. And Chantal has a fantastic way to show beauty in homeschooling and in her children. So I'm just going to get started. I did kind of briefly share with you what my um, three, almost four year olds favorite books are um, in my clean the boys room video. I, I kind of briefly shared those and I did want to talk briefly about this. So in this journey that I have been on minimalizing my house, just because there's a lot coming up that I will try to reveal, um, this journey and some of that means keeping things minimal and simple. And I finally just gotten to the point where I'm not trying to look at numbers anymore. I'm looking at it in a different perspective and suddenly that freed up so much of my life and what I thought it had to look like. And in that was, I just kept the, the children's favorites because I'm reading to the children. I really enjoy picture books. I have um, someone that I absolutely love. I love his illustrations. I love what he does with his books and that is Thomas Locker. But you're not gonna see anything in him because that's my favorite. That's not my children's favorite. And I have my good fond memories of Thomas Locker on our bookshelves because my mom also loved him and I read those a lot. I read them so much that I can remember a lot of it and again it's just not my children's favorite so I ended up removing those from our shelves. If there's one I really want to read I look for it at the library. I know my library back in California had him and I'm pretty sure I can get him up here too. So you're not going to see a lot of him but I really do love his books. Um, so bear that in mind, especially because I know I have a lot of Charlotte Mason um, viewers. Um, he does really good living books with, with this artwork that's out of this world. You'll also probably hear my uh, son working on his kitchen chores in the background. Girl, just stop it. No, you're fine, honey. I'm not going to ask you to stop your chores. Just keep going. So you're going to get real life here. All right, but what I have here, actually I have a couple of these here. What I have here is the basket that we keep in the bedroom. Okay. These are books that he can just, when we say it's bedtime, the kids just have a little bit of reading time before it's lights out. And um, the three, four year old was kind of wanting to be along in that process now that he has a bed in the room with the boys. And so I just put these in here because these are the board books. So if he falls asleep on top of them, um, they're not going to get damaged. So that's mainly what's in here or just ones that he really loves. All right. Um, I actually picked this one up yesterday and it has already been read multiple times. And that is I Love You Little One by Nancy Tufuri. I'm going to say Tufuri because we're talking about animals and it sounds fur-like. So this one is so sweet. This is with heartwarming simplicity, six animal babies and one special little child are tenderly assured of the many ways they are loved. We are Christians and so I do change it up a little bit, but we love this one already. Um, I had multiple of these, but they have been read to death. And it is How Dinosaurs Play With Their Friends, Jane Yolen and Mark Teague. There have been many of these made and they're fun. This one is one that I choose to read to my kids. So The Little Airplane by Lois Lansky, she wrote a lot of like uh, the small family, the little family. She did a lot of these and I do really like them. And my kids will learn to like them. This is another favorite, the little snowplow. 
And then, like I had mentioned in that one video, a lot of these ones have been collected over the years through birthdays and Christmases. This one my daughter picked up for her brother and got a little note inside. So I asked my sister, my sisters, my mother, my daughter, if you're going to give books to um, the children that you write a little note in there for them. And it's fun to kind of pick those up at the thrift store too with little notes in them. Um, and maybe as to why they do it. So this one's kind of fun because this is Katie and the Big Snow. Again, another really fun one. I love anything by Virginia Lee Burton. We used to have the little house and I don't know if we overread it or... At one point we had like multiple copies, so I don't know if I ended up selling our our, our uh, extra copy and ended up selling both copies. I don't remember. But um, we also had Calico for a while by, by her, but it wasn't everybody's favorite, so we didn't keep that long. But this one's fun because it's actually to John, Johnny, which is um, my son's name. So this one, you just have the snow plow that's going through the town clearing up the snow so that uh, the firemen can get through, the policemen can get through, the mailman can get through, and all of that. Another one that was so much fun and we love to death is a little blue truck. And I don't have any of the other ones, but um, there's a little blue truck leads the way and a little blue truck in springtime. Oh, see? Do you want to read little blue truck? Where does little blue truck go? Down the road. Down the road. Does he go beep beep? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the animals that he meets? What are some of the animals he meets? Horses. Uh huh. Pigs. Uh huh. And sheep. Uh huh. Ducks. Yeah. Horses. Horses. No, I already said that thing enough. Isn't there an animal that helps him get unstuck? Remember? Uh-huh. What was that animal? Frog. Frog. Yep, no. the frog helps him get unstuck. No, it was a toad. Oh. Excuse me, a toad. The big green toad. Here you go. You want to go read that? Okay, so that one is fun. This is one my sister found for, I think, um, my middle son. But it has stuck with all of us, and that is... What Brothers Do Best by Laura Numeroff. I will try to leave as many of these linked down below or create a blog post or something so you can get them. But brothers can help you climb a tree, push you on a swing, share a delicious snack. Brothers can teach you how to swim, do puzzles with you, and so it just goes through all the different things that you can do with brothers. And it's not just something that a younger kid can get ideas from, and or not even ideas, but... They also help you clean your room. Um, but it's not just for like younger kids on what older brothers can do for you. It's also like something that older brothers have a like inspiration to do. These are all my board books because they're read so much that we need help. And everybody's favorite, The Big Red Barn by Margaret Wise Brown. And you just go through the barn with all the animals until at one point, they all need to come home to the barn, and they're in the field all day. So you start out in the barn, you go out to the field, they're all out there, and then they all need to come home as the sun starts to set until at night. And even at night, there is other barn animals that come out, which only the mice were left to play. So, Big Red Barn, not my particular favorite. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say in minimalism in books, and I got distracted. Um, I learned in this journey, in this process, that there are books that just kids love, and they want you to read those over and over and over again. So I had a bunch of wonderful, beautiful stories um, that I would read to the children, or that I thought I would be reading to the children, but the reality was they were more for me because they were pretty and beautiful, but they were not the ones that my boys would choose or my children would choose. Oh my gosh. 
So that was the one thing when getting rid of these ones that I thought they needed to like. These were ones that they really didn't enjoy. And I don't purchase a book if I have any problems with it. So I didn't have a problem with any of these. There was just more, some that I liked more than others, but it wasn't necessarily ones that my children's like. I'm gonna turn the sound off because why is it that everybody always. There. Okay, so, and this isn't a classic example. This is not a favorite of mine. I am not a silly person. I don't like silly books. They seem pointless to me. But this is one that they love. I think this might be the only Dr. Seuss book I have. But it's Mr. Brown Camus, Can You? And I get my husband to read that to the kids because I don't like Dr. Seuss. I have no understanding of why he is so great other than he uses words repetitive so that younger readers can learn how to read. And that sounds great and dandy, but I am not a Dr. Seuss fan. You can all unsubscribe now. Anyway, but one that we really do love and we can repeat it going through our chores throughout the day is we're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. And we go uh-oh through grass and mud and everything until we get to the bear, to the cave with the bear in it. And then we got to go back home as quick as we can because now this bear is chasing us. And we can even get home and we get upstairs, but uh-oh, we forgot to shut and lock the door. So we got to go back downstairs and then we go into the covers and we will never go on a bear hunt again. And then the poor bear who just wanted to play has to walk home all alone. That's the end of the story that we always add in. So, love that one. My little kid is over here. So kind of good. You like it? Uh-huh. That your favorite? Uh-huh. I still want to come on you. Not right now. Okay, then this one is Guess How Much I Love You. What it's about, this little bunny that kind of says, okay, what if I do all this? Will you still love me? And then the mother kind of goes even bigger than that. I will, actually it's a, it's a son and father. Um, but I love you this much, but I love you this much. And it just kind of goes through all that until you get to the end of the story. So... And again, I can share these and say that these are ones that we really enjoy because we're, we keep rereading them. So that's, um, those are all the board books I think we have. There might be one or two in random places throughout the house that are being enjoyed. Um, so yeah. Now these ones are just more of a little bit older than like three or four. I would probably say this is like four, five, six, seven that we read. These are more particular like my boy books, but my girls do enjoy, did or do enjoy them. However, um, my last daughter tends to have all of her books in her room on her special shelf. And I will share that in a different video because otherwise this is going to be way too long. But here are some other ones. We have Johnny Appleseed, which is a step into reading. This is um, really sweetly done because it is about Johnny Appleseed going to visit these two children and just kind of going over some of the myths that are about him. And he kind of just talks about his journey and about how he's gotten to where he is. He left uh, just before bedtime or leaves at bedtime. Another one that they love. This is one that all of mine loved, especially when the duck gets spanked. The story of Ping. This is the story of kind of like a slowpoke duck, and then he doesn't make the boat on time, and then he kind of almost ends up as duck soup until a little boy saves him, and then it's kind of like his whole journey back to his master, his little China master, and then he's back with the crowd again. And he's not so... something <clears throat> you'd have to know my family but um I have a older boy and now a three-year-old boys that are all about firefighters and so this is just 
anytime we find one. I actually have no idea what's in here. I just found a fire fire book with real life pictures. It's all about being a firefighter. This is one that we love. And by we, I mean they do. So it's in here. And then the last two for this basket, and it's already 20 minutes, so I'm going to have basket or, or video part two. But I have, this one is from my sister. And her note in here was so sweet. Uh, John, this was the first book I read by myself out loud. It forever holds a special place in my heart because of that. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Happy birthday. I love you very much. All my love, a.k.a. your favorite aunt. And I left her name out. Um, this is special because my sister really struggled with reading and ADHD. So it, it, it's not just going to be special to the three-year-old. It's special to me reading it to my three-year-old because of how much... My sisters and I are really close, or I like to think that we are really close. I'm really close to them. Some of them are really close to me. Um, but it just holds that special meaning for me because of that. And I thought she gave me this one, but we don't remember where we got it. But it's Are You My Mother, and it's about this. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even say what Go Dog Go is all about. I just kind of told you the meaning behind it. It's kind of like a Dr. Seuss type of book, but it's written by P.D. Eastman. And it's very simple words as you kind of go through the pages and what this dog is going to do and who he meets. Again, very uh, Dr. Seuss, which is probably why I can't tell you too much about this book because, well, I think my husband reads this to them. Um, but like that, by the, or by that same author, we also have Are You My Mother? This one I do know more about. This is about a little bird that basically goes through all these animals asking, Are you my mother? No, I can't be your mother. And he finally gets to a point where he's at this big old um, machine that, you know, he's getting really scared of. But the machine dumps him into the little nest and he's back home with his mother. So really sweet type book. That one I can tell you more about. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave this as a part one. These are just really fun. These are all my board books. Again, I told you why. So, well, not all. But mostly my board books. And why they are a favorite. And why we keep going back to them. And why I keep things pretty simple. This I picked up at Salvation Army. And this just stays in his room. And that's all the books he has in there. And again, they are favorites. And they are ones that I know that will be read over and over. They just won't be collecting dust. So thank you so much for watching it. And you can stay tuned for part two tomorrow. Dirt around with. Kitty also had a snow plow to plow snow with. Kitty belonged to the highway department of the city of Geopolis. The highway department repaired the roads in the summer and kept them clear of snow in the winter so traffic could run in and out and around the city. So, love that one, my little kiddos over here is kind of good. Yeah. You like it? Mm -hmm. Is that your favorite? Mm -hmm. I still want to come on you. Not right now. Okay.